What's something that is common knowledge at your workplace that will be mind-blowing to the rest of us? Story 1. Former prison guard here. Most inmates do not have access to weights more than two to four times per month, and only if they've earned it with good behavior. The going rate for cigarettes on the prison black market is $100 a box. If you're willing to go a few years without any friends, and if you have about $100 a month of expendable income, depending on your crime, you can go your entire sentence without being in a fight or joining a gang. Debauchery happens in prison, but it isn't nearly as common as it was 30 years ago. Inmates have an anonymous hotline they can call if they want to report a debauchery, and now there are cameras almost everywhere except for cells. That's where most debauchery happens, and there's not a lot prison guards can do to stop it. 95% of what you see in prison TV shows or movies is creative thinking. Your first day in prison, I do not recommend picking a fight with the biggest, toughest looking guy in prison, or fighting with the first person who is a butthole to you. It won't make you look tough. More likely, you'll just go to SEG for a few weeks before getting kicked out into a new unit, where you'll have to do it all over again. Instead, find out who's in charge of your race. If you're white, it'll probably be Aryan Brotherhood or Peckerwood. Then either join up and ask how much it costs to be protected. This is called paying rent. You won't make any friends paying rent, so plan on reading a lot. If you don't have the money or the desire to be extorted, you can join the gang. I wouldn't recommend this unless you're going to be down for a long time. You'll start out on the bottom of the prison gang hierarchy. After an initial training period of working out, you'll be asked to do hits on enemies of the gang. The shot callers will tell you who and when you'll be attacking, and you'll be expected to follow through. The problem with this is that you'll likely be given additional time on your sentence, so if your goal is to get out of prison, this isn't the recommended route. Plus, you'll be required to get gang tattoos, which will make it difficult to live normally after prison, and are often accompanied with hepatitis C, HIV, and TB. It depends on the state, but guards in the towers are carrying weapons with live ammunition. Prison guards tend to be rednecks with fairly good aim. If you're going to kick someone's butt, don't do it in the yard. If you're perceived by a tower guard as putting someone in a position of substantial bodily harm or risk of life, you will be ended. Perimeter towers are also armed with live ammunition. If you're going to try to escape, your best bet is tunneling out or stealing a guard uniform or impersonating a staff member, etc. Over the fence will probably get you shot, unless you have friends who have bribed the guard in the tower. If you're in for anything carnal, you're going to have a bad time. Too long didn't read, don't go to prison, it sucks. Story 2 a lot, probably most, research in the physical sciences isn't conducted on awesome supercomputers. Usually it'll be your standard Dell-type office desktop. However, we have to keep around some old Unix workstations. God, I hate Solaris. Just so we can run programs from the 70s that no one has enough time for, or slaves grad students to port the code to something modern, like Windows 3.1. Seriously, I was going through the code once for shoots and giggles and came across instructions on how to run it on Vax. It drives me crazy at work. Technology companies don't give a care at all about your privacy. They regularly steal and take data and use it for internal analytics. The only part of privacy and security that they care about is what you see. Facebook, this isn't to blame them, but it's true, has convinced everyone that taking and using users' data is totally kosher. Be aware, there is a great diversity of opinion on this, and that is fine. The company I work for is a small startup, about 45 people. Our CEO and marketing guys just want user data and don't care about anything else. This isn't to say that the data we keep is enormously sensitive, purchasing patterns and things of that type, but nowhere do we inform the user that we're gathering their data. We also collect user emails for a specific purpose, sending receipts, but I have seen these used to send unsolicited spam. It is not true that all companies do this. I think Apple has the strongest record of the big companies in protecting privacy, but it seems very common among small companies, and especially startups. These guys are desperate to make it rich and do not always have great respect for their customers. They very often take the view that their investors, or really their next investors, are their real customers. The point was made about Facebook, if you're not paying, you're not the customer, you're probably the product. I think the key thing is letting people know that you're collecting and using their data in a straightforward, plain English way. Almost no one does this. When it comes to security, I stand by what I first wrote. It is almost always only after a huge security leak, see LinkedIn or Google Wallet for recent examples, occurs that a company will start to impose strict security. 
All those apps you download that have any of your data, some dude wrote that and very likely did spend an extra month making it safe. Story 3. At Chick-fil-A, we accept any other restaurants and fast food coupons. Say you have a coupon for a free sandwich at McDonald's, we would accept that and give you a free one. Also, if you were to get up to the drive-thru and realize you had left your money elsewhere, we usually will comp your meal and tell you to pay it back next time. Of course, this is if the meal is in moderation and not a huge order. I will try to find out if the policy is just our store or everywhere. I've been with the company for about six years now, so it is very possible it has changed. Also, we do accept Chick-fil-A coupons that have expired no matter what, and ones from other Chick-fil-A's. Usually I don't even look at the expiration date because of this reason. Asked my boss about the coupons from other stores, it is per store if the owner wants to. He said he would have no problem with it since no one really knows about it. If you all have any more questions about Chick-fil-A, I would love to answer them. The coupon thing honestly sounds like an attempt at making me look like an absolute idiot. Slides Burger King coupons across the counter. Sir, this is Chick-fil-A. But, but this guy on the internet. Story 4. Virtually all of the forests you hike in, camp in, hunt in, and ride your bike through were once either farmland or pasture, or logged at some point in time. 99% of the forest land east of the Mississippi in the US and in Europe were all once cut down, and almost none of the original old growth forests remain in the state where they were before man cultivated the land. Notable exceptions are high mountaintop forests, steep ravines, and specially conserved tracts of land held privately by concerned landowners. Many hardwood forests in the U.S. were cut down between 1750 and 1900, and are in the process of secondary succession, whereby new pioneer species take over, and a new forest slowly matures. These secondary forests aren't always of the same species as the one that existed before being cut down. Many of the American chestnut and American elm species, which once comprised some of the most massive and beautiful trees, and made up to 60% of forest stands down the Appalachian Mountains, have been killed off by introduced diseases from Europe. I should have stated that I'm a forester, and I do most of my work out in the woods, and occasionally in front of a couple computer screens making maps using GIS software. Story 5. I worked at an optometrist's office for about two years and sold glasses. We sold more high-end stuff, but basically had everything. What some people don't realize is that if your prescription is really strong, you should shell out the extra money for the better lens material and maybe for that anti-reflective coating. It will make a huge difference in clarity, especially if you drive at night. If you have a really low prescription, frick it. Get the cheap lenses, you won't notice. Also, if you wear contacts, give your eyes a break every now and then. If you wear them from the moment you wake up until right before you go to bed, your eyesight will get way worse, way faster. You risk serious infection, and you're kind of suffocating your eyes. Even if you have the kind that you can wear for 30 days straight, you sure as heck better have at least one pair of crappy glasses you can wear if you ever tear a lens, injure your eye, or lose or run out of contacts. I swear I'm like the only person who takes my contacts off at night anymore. Story 6. Healthcare worker, if we have to phone a patient at home and someone else answers, we are not allowed to identify where we are calling from or why. So, say we need to ring John Q. Citizen and his wife answers, then we can only say, may I speak to John Citizen, please? Wife will ask us who it is. Our name. Wife will ask, where are you from? Why do you need to speak to John? I can't discuss that with you. Could you please put John on the phone? Etc. Etc. It causes so many issues. We would love to just say, I'm calling about his blood test, but we are legally not allowed to do so. I'm not being obstructionist or rude. Please just suck it up and pass the phone over. This makes perfect sense. My preceptor gave an example that explains why. Hello, Ms. X. This is John from the so-and-so woman's clinic calling with your pregnancy test results. Turns out that Mr. X answered the phone and that he had a vasectomy some years ago. Story 7. I work at a food bank, despite lots of people thinking a food bank's primary responsibility is to give food directly to hungry people, food banks are actually typically distributors and hubs where agencies, such as soup kitchens, pantries, churches, etc., pick up food to give directly to people in need. Yes, some banks, like mine, do have programs that give food directly to people, but overall the main goal of a food bank is bringing in and storing food to distribute to other groups and organizations. Also, our food purchasing power is almost 10 times the average consumer. So while giving canned food makes a lot of people feel better than a monetary donation, 
We really are able to buy so much more food with the same amount of money someone may have spent going to the grocery store to buy us canned food. Story 8. Healthcare ICU Nurse Sometimes, having a patient pass away is the best thing to brighten my day. Seriously, if you've been keeping mom or grandma alive for 2 or 12 weeks after she should have biologically passed away, and she finally gets to pass, I'm genuinely happy I don't have to torture someone to soothe your conscience anymore. If you'd put your pet down in this situation, it might just be time to let your more valuable human relative go. Uh, I cannot upvote this enough. My grandmother was in ICU and was taken home because two of my family are nurses and thought they could take better care of her. And when I visited her in the hospital, the only thing she'd say repeatedly was, I want to go to heaven. If they're in pain and want to pass away, stop being selfish and let them pass. Story 9 Most private colleges, especially those with high endowments and a considerable amount of prestige, will send a list of each year's applicants to their communications development office. They'll research the kids and their families and give them a rating based on the potential the kid has to add to the endowment, basically an assessment of family wealth and potential. This is used more to distinguish between the multitude of wealthy kids who apply to such colleges. If you're poor, most schools see that as added diversity and will help your chances at acceptance. Poor diversity. Rich wealth. In between, F off. Story 10. Teacher here, despite our best efforts, we are not your children's parents. Many times, students come to our rooms with a complete lack of manners. Usually, those students learn less because they feel the classroom is just like home. If you are a relaxed parent, then your kid will think that misbehaviors are also okay in school. Please, teach your children to be well-behaved. It will help us all. My wife just did a stint at a daycare with a bunch of misbehaved heathen children from broken white trash homes. She was miserable because these kids were so awful or acted out home frustrations in class. Thank you for this. Hopefully it can sink into someone. Story 11. Practically every mentally handicapped person has a viral STD. Hepatitis, herpes, HPV, or AIDS. It's depressing, but 90% of people with developmental disabilities, mentally retarded, will be physically shamed and abused in their life. The company I work for has about 80 residents. To my knowledge, every female resident we have has been physically shamed and abused. The two worst cases I've heard of thus far was one locked in her room and repetitively beaten and violated by various family members. Her face is permanently disfigured from the beatings. The other case is one who was basically pimped out by her own mother until APS took her away. She came here with a ton of STDs. You name it and she had it. Story 12. I've run a valet company for years. We don't look through your things. We probably know more about your car than you do. As long as there are no after-stock additions, then please tell us. We don't take the car off the lot. Most of the people that have worked for me have degrees. There was a point when I was the only guy on my staff without a master's. And the nicer the car is, the less we drive it. Too long didn't read, Ferris Bueller ruined the public's notions about valets. You can't fool me, it can get wrecked, stolen, scratched, breathed on wrong, a pigeon could crap on it. Story 13. Doctors and nurses in hospitals make mistakes all the time. They work crazy hours, have too much to do, and small errors can change someone's life. I don't even blame them. The conditions make it impossible. Yep. A boy I went to theater school with got hit by a car when he was about 11. The nurse had been on the clock for like 12 hours already, and she read the request for 4.5 cc of morphine as 45 cc. Luckily, the mistake was caught right away, so instead of passing away, the kid just spent six months in a coma and the year after waking up in a wheelchair. He never could sing after that either. Story 14. There are only 500 music composers in the world that actually make a living from composing for games, films, and media. For scale, there are at least 11,000 wannabe composers in Los Angeles alone trying to make it. Last year, I studied a module on audio for visual media as part of my degree. My lecturer straight up told us the way to get into the job market of film composition is to produce a demo tape, then travel to Hollywood or wherever and hang around the right bars until you happen to bump into one of the high-up film directors, then give them a copy of your tape and hope. Story 15. I work retail, more specifically women's clothing. While it should be obvious, I don't think many people think about it. 
However, those cute bathing suits you women like to try on have probably touched no less than 20 other twats before being purchased. They come in with sanitary stickers on them. There are signs saying to leave your panties on under them, but from what I've seen, few women follow either of those rules. I've had to defect out plenty of swim bottoms that have stains on them. Heck, even the tops aren't safe. I leave my underwear on, sickos. Story 16. If you spend a bunch of money to get your computer fixed, and then a week later there's a new issue, 99% of the time it's your own fault. No, we didn't put some magic voodoo spell on your computer to keep you spending money fixing the dang thing. It's that 250 plus gigabytes of media you insist on downloading from random places on the internet. Almost every issue on a computer boils down to user error. Also, if you come in and ask us, you won't look at my files, will you? The first thing we do when you leave is to find exactly what you're worried about us finding. Story 17. I work at a tea store, and let me tell you, we are not doctors. I can't give you tea that will make you get an erection, cure your son's cancer, yes, I've had someone ask that, or act as a morphine equivalent painkiller. It's crazy what people think what is essentially hot water can fix. To be honest, most wellness teas don't do anything whatsoever. I said this below, but most teas for sale at tea stores won't do anything shockingly noticeable unless you drink liters and liters of it. You can mix up a batch of weird crap at home that might do something weird. Story 18. When a urinary catheter is placed, a tiny balloon is then filled inside the bladder so the catheter stays in place and doesn't slip out. If a catheter is pulled out before the balloon is deflated, it shreds the urethra and is a bloody mess. Don't ever pull out your catheter, ever. Update. Another fun fact about catheters, for men, it is best for their dongs to become hard. It makes placing the catheter a lot easier. So if a nurse has ever said thank you while placing a catheter in your semi-erect dong, you know why. Story 19. Failing a student is absolute agony for most professors. We will often look for any loophole we can find to let you pass the class. Because frankly, having to tell you that you're failing is one of the worst things we will have to do for our job all year. We think about you when we turn in our grades, and we torture ourselves about it afterward. Unless your professor is truly, truly a butthole, when you fail a class, you have legitimately failed that class. P.S. Grading papers takes a really long time. Story 20. When you visit a single page of Amazon.com or pretty much any large-scale website, no less than 30 computers put the page together. We're talking servers that have sub-millisecond round-trip times between nodes. When they reboot, it takes an hour to refill the cache, so all results from those machines are discarded until 99.9% .9 of the results are instant. Which is to say, if you heat up some cardboard, you can trick your roommate into thinking you have pizza. Story 21 50% of patients in psych wards aren't crazy. They're just healthy people with crappy lives. You still have to diagnose them with a disorder, even if they're not crazy. Or insurance, Medicaid won't pay. Also, there is a huge downtick in psych admissions by people with chronic mental illness over the holidays. This is because families feel the Christmas spirit and temporarily let them back into their lives. After the holidays, it's busy as families dump them back to the state. Story 22. I worked at a fast food restaurant with a drive through When you pull up to the speaker box and tell us to hold on a second, we are still listening. We hear your conversations, your singing in the car, and your awkward fights with your children in the back seat. There are four people with headsets listening to you. The best part is, we can hear you, and you can't hear us. Mad amounts of crap are talked, as we cordially wait for you to make up your mind. Story 23 Hotels have to keep what's called rate parity across all travel websites. If they list a room on one website for $199.99 a night and $199.98 on another, they risk being fined $50 for every occurrence. This is why every website can claim they have the lowest prices, because it's supposed to be the same across all sites. Most hotels update their online inventory Friday afternoon and Monday mornings. You're most likely to find an error then. Story 24 if you're living with family or just generally need to hide your private life and concerns, you can make appointments with Planned Parenthood online and you have the option to choose that if someone other than yourself answers the phone, they will say that Corey is calling for you as opposed to the doctor's office or Planned Parenthood. Not sure if my wording is right here, but yeah. Story 25. 
On YouTube, network owners with Content ID access have the scary, powerful ability to remove any videos that match content in their own library with a single click, without filing a DMCA claim. What's worse is that this system isn't checked by anyone or verified by timestamps, meaning I could download your months-old video, re-upload as my own, and have yours removed, and you couldn't do anything about it. YouTube partner and network owner. Story 26. Wendy's actually cracks and cooks a fresh egg every time you order a breakfast sandwich, and the chili does not come out of a can. Indeed, the chili does not come from a can. However, as a former Wendy's cook, I can tell you that the meat in the chili comes from burgers on the grill that have been overcooked or broken apart while being cooked and prepared. Story 27. If you're upset that you're two weeks out of warranty and your ex has broken, ask to speak to a supervisor and tell them you've been a loyal customer. You just want someone to make your day because you're low on cash at the moment. Where I work, you're not penalized for giving people warranty exemptions. We just save them for when people don't demand to speak to God like an entitled butt clown. Story 28. Airbus already has their production line planned for decades ahead and has no intention of becoming any environmentally friendly at all. They will, however, try their hardest, without spending too much money, to appear environmentally friendly. Throw away and I won't log in again. Godspeed, good sir. Story 29. I worked in a cardboard factory for a while, taking huge rolls of paper and gluing and baking them into cardboard sheets and boxes. That warm, delicious smell that comes from your closed takeaway pizza as you drive home, it's mostly not the pizza. It's the sugar, starch, and animal fat in the cardboard and glue. The cardboard factory smelled exactly like takeaway pizza. Story 30. I work reception and get a lot of automated telemarketing calls throughout the day. If you press 9 during an automated call, this will usually automatically put you on their do not call list and end the call immediately. Way more effective than just hanging up, as it prevents future callbacks. Figuring this out has cut my call volume down drastically. Story 31. The majority of Japanese students have no free time. They go to school for marathon training at 6 a.m., have school from 8 to 4, club activities from 4 to 6, and night class from 7 to 8 or 9. If you ask them what their hobbies are, they can't answer because they have no time for hobbies. However, they are, in general, no smarter than students in the U.S. I say this lovingly. Story 32. That legislators, celebrities, high-ranking government officials, and anyone else that can make trouble for the credit industry have a special section in the credit bureaus that keep them in high scores, even if they are high risk. But it ain't me, it ain't me, I ain't no fortunate one, no. Story 33. When I worked at AMC, we don't clean the theaters after every movie. We just sweep the popcorn under the seats, try to pick up all the big trash, and put all the armrests down. Cinemark is much more demanding. Every kernel of popcorn must be eliminated. Story 34. In 18 years of working in restaurants, I've never seen anybody spit in anyone's food. D-bag customers might get their ticket pushed to the back of the line or one of the smaller end pieces of steak, but we don't violate health regulations if it can be helped. Story 35. At Outback Steakhouse, they will prepare your food however the frick you want. They'll put your sirloin in a blender if you want. Get creative. I think Outback owes me a gift card or something for all this free advertising I just gave them. Story 36. If you live in a state where there are Meyer stores, Michigan, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, your prescriptions for antibiotics are free. No questions asked. Very helpful for sick people without insurance. Story 37. All keys to Chevy police cars are the same key, unless the department has a custom key made, which they never do. Get one and you have them all. This improves my post-apocalyptic fantasies immensely. Story 38. I work minimum wage. I see you steal things. I don't care and will never stop you because this job is easily replaceable and I don't see a penny in the profits of the store. Story 39. At McDonald's, we have welfare day and child tax day marked on the calendars. Only brave souls are scheduled to work on those days. Story 40. At Dairy Queen, in Canada at least, we make all our novelties in store. I can't believe how many people are surprised when I tell them that. Story 41. If you read to your kids, they will learn to read. If you don't, they will have a vocabulary shortfall from which they will never recover. Story 42. Coca-Cola employee here. 
Fun fact, that crisp, sharp smell that Coca-Cola and Diet Coke give off? Strictly phosphoric acid. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.